Hi guys, it's Nancy here and I'm back with another process video for you. And this is just using papers from my stash which I have kind of found while tidying up and things I want to use. So one is the pink paisley um, hey girl um, collection and then I have um, a couple of Studio Calico, um, no one is Studio Calico and one's Crate Paper um, of these 6x6 pads. Um, this one which is it's called Atlantic I think. Um, I've had in my stash for a very long time and hadn't used so my aim is to try and get that used up and I'm just scrapping this um, 6x4 maybe slightly smaller than 6x4 photo and um, I knew that I had this piece of paper that um, had that kind of printed star kind of border on at the bottom and so that's what I wanted to kind of pull my colours from a little bit and like my stars and stuff and this is a picture of me and my boyfriend um, in front of the Hogwarts Express. This was um, like taken in front of a CG screen um, at the Warner Brothers studio. And this one is going in my American album as a bit of a filler page. And um, I'm now at the point where I've got I think about 10 layouts to make for that album. I was hoping to get it done by the end of May, but I don't know if I'm going to. But it will be, <laughs> it's definitely going to be finished before I go to the States in July. Um, and as I said, I've made a list now, I've been through, I've kind of gone through the album and know where I've got some gaps that I need to fill. And as I said, this was a photo that kind of hadn't gone in with my other photos because I said it was one that um, you kind of got printed and given. I said it's got the little Warner Brothers Studios um, little um, logo on the bottom there, which I wanted to keep on because, you know, that's, you know, it was given to us um, as part of the tour. And so I just really picked out a lot of papers here which kind of have a star kind of theme because of course it's kind of magical, it's Harry Potter or Ruby. Um, and I've kind of gone for this sort of corals, um, sort of greys and navy. Um, I said the background paper had kind of some little bits of blue ink spotting on and then this kind of black border bit with stars at the bottom. Um, which is going to kind of lead me to kind of making a cluster there at the very bottom. Um, I'm pulling out some bits here. I'm pulling out all these tiny little stars, which I then end up not using. Um, but I do end up using that die cut. And as I said, I'm just going to kind of look through my embellishment bits and pieces here to see, um, you know, anything I can add. And if you've watched my process videos before, you know this is something I do. I kind of just go through and pull a load of different bits and pieces out. Um, these are all from the Craft Market um, collection from Crate Paper. And again, I'm just going through and pulling anything out which I think is going to be helpful and useful to embellish this layout. I'm also going through the Simple Stories I Am um, embellishment pack. And I can keep my embellishment packs just in these little um, Tupperware. Um, I find them easy to sort of store and go through. And now I'm going through the Crate Paper um, Journey one. And again, I'm really loving embellishment packs at the moment. Um, it's really kind of leading where sort of my embellishment clusters and styles going, and as I said, I just can't get enough of them at the moment. Um, and so many of them are such bargains because you just get so many bits and pieces in them. I mean, I know that craft market one especially was, you know, jam packed full. So I've pulled out all of these different um, embellishments, and I'm just going to ink um, all these up just using my London Flog Memento ink. And again, that's because of these are all kind of different colours and shades, so it's just going to help everything sort of tone in together. I thought these little tickets and stuff would be really good to use on this page, as I said, as we do have the Hogwarts Express behind us. As I said, we're not looking <laughs> the most attractive in the picture because, um, as you know, if you've been watching my videos and seen any of my American um, layouts, it did rain quite a lot when we were there and it absolutely chucked it down um, the day we went to... Um, on the VIP tour at the Warner Brothers studio, so <laughs> we look a little bit bedraggled, but hey, we're okay. <laughs> and so I'm just going to ink, as I said, everything up um, and then kind of put it to one side and then sort of look at building a little bit um, of layers up behind. And as I said, this is something I kind of tend to do, it's my process of working. I'll kind of work out the core kind of like paper layers and then I'll pull out some embellishments and then I'll just kind of add some interest and stuff to the background before I add it all together. I did cut that chevron piece of paper up, um, just I was going to kind of only use part of it but then I wanted to decide to choose both bits but there is a little bit of a gap um, just to make it kind of cover everything but I'm fine with that. As I said this had this kind of turquoise blue like little ink spots there at the top 
so I thought I need to kind of you know carry on um, that embellishment and so I'm just using um, my dilutions and I'm also using my grey dilutions um, I said in one of my older videos which I shoot recently um, <laughs> the ones that I found on my hard drive um, I used the grey dilutions ink and I actually really loved how it came out so I'm now making kind of a point to use that um, grey dilutions Again, if you've been watching my videos recently, you'll know that I'm kind of just loving this kind of squiggly effect at the moment um, of just kind of drawing with the end um, of the ink dropper, um, kind of the, you know the spray bit, and I just really love this as a way of adding a little bit of texture and movement to the background. Um, it's not for everyone, I understand that, but I really like it, and I said I think it kind of just adds kind of something a bit playful um, to the different layouts that I'm doing at the moment. I'm just adding this, which is the sea foam um, Heidi Swap, and again, this is a really nice kind of shimmery um, sort of mint colour. And again, I'm just doing a few little squiggles in that as well. Of course, I wanted to use some glitter and bits on here because, you know, being a bit of a Harry Potter theme there, you know, a little bit of magical. I thought I could get away with a few <laughs> little sprinkles. So I'm just going to build up that kind of um, squiggling background with my different colours. Again, I'm going to pull it down there just over that little sort of pre-printed bottom design just because I wanted to make it look cohesive and kind of add up to the rest of the um, layout. Often I find, you know, lots of papers kind of have these pre-put in kind of uh, pre-printed sort of embellishment clusters just really don't work for me. Um, they're either in like slightly the wrong place or they just you can never find anything that kind of really goes. So I'm going to put out this star one which is one of my favourite, it's a Tim Holtz one and as I said I really really love this and I'm just going to be using, I think this is, this is Barn Door I'm going to be using because I'm going to be um, using some red paper to kind of ink around, um, to layer this whole layout on and um, I know there's the red of the um, front of the train as well so I want to just kind of bring that out and I love this stencil, I use it on, <laughs> I've used it on so many layouts recently um, I do have, I found when I was tidying up, I have the stamping up one, um, which I kind of need to use a bit, I need to actually get out and use because it's a larger size. I've got this which is kind of like a Japanese kind of clouds one. Um, it didn't, I was thinking of misting it, but then I couldn't really be bothered to get my mists out again. So I ended up trying to ink over it, which didn't kind of give me the effect that I wanted, but all in all it kind of just added some more kind of squiggles and stuff to the background, which, you know, I'm okay with. So now I'm going to start um, adding my paper layers down. And again, I'm just using my ATG to stick everything down. And I just put a little bit of adhesive in the middle because I know I want to tuck some different bits and pieces um, under my layers here. And I have um, mounted my photo in the same paper that I'm going to mount the whole layout on. Um, it's something I like to do. Um, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll know that. Um, I just think it helps everything look really cohesive and kind of together. So I'm just going <clears> to <throat> be kind of working on building up these paper layers and moving them about a little bit. As I said, I could have got away with not cutting that paper, but actually I think it kind of works just having making it a little bit bigger. And as I said, some of these are just like little bits of scraps and stuff that I had lying around. I did cut a banner in this piece. You know, if in doubt, add a banner tail to things. <laughs> That kind of works for me. So I'm just going to kind of add different bits of paper here and kind of see where I'm going to go with it. I I wouldn't say at this stage I was loving where the layout was going. I think I'd covered up too much of that kind of background. Um, so I do decide to just bring in that stencil again and kind of ink over some of it to kind of help it kind of merge a little bit with the background so it's not um, so stark a contrast against it. And as I said, that's the great thing about, you know, these stencils, you can just use kind of little bits of them and just using the ink through them, you know, you don't have to wait for anything to dry or anything. So I'm now going to start to build up my embellishment clusters. And this is um, a little label from the um, I Am's collection. And again, it was a grey tone, so it worked in really well. So that is just a little um, die cut, which is cut from my um, silhouette cameo. Um, as I said before, if I have like space on the sheet of paper that I'm cutting, um, then I will tend to just add a few generic shapes on there. 
which I will sort of cut out and then just leave with my die cuts and kind of add in and you can never go wrong with kind of little circles or little doilies. I do think I'll probably need to cut out a few more that side because that's a really nice clustering size. And now I'm just going through all the embellishments that I pulled out earlier. Um, some of them are vellum pieces, um, some of them, um, you know, are just different cardstock pieces which I've kind of quite happy to sort of cut up and layer um, over into different parts of the layout. You're going to have brought in that more pink tone which is um, was from the craft market collection but I really like how that looks and again within pulling out my embellishments there's a couple of other sort of fishtail banners that worked quite well um, I did find this um, big camera which I want to use um, again as kind of a feature layout there a feature of my embellishment there I do have a lot of problems with this in this um, vellum embellishment but I'm just going to kind of try and go with it, get it, and <laughs> see if I can get it to work. And um, often my, I find where I'm clustering so much over that I kind of lose some of the um, the text and stuff on it, but I'm okay with that. Um, I then was going for, again, this is the craft market, and there was some weird little banner pieces, triangles, that I have a love-hate relationship with. So I actually just pulled one out of them and tucked it into that weird kind of trap space that I had there. Um, again, don't really know why I added a butterfly to that bit, but just a little bit, and it just added another little bit of craft in, which, you know, why not? And I think sometimes if you've got like bits and pieces that you're not, you know, overtly in love with an embellishment pack, sometimes it's great just to add it in to an overall cluster. Um, I knew I wanted to kind of um, add this little um, January thing on. It had a gold bit of glitter on. But I didn't want to do it, so I just tucked that under. And again, this is using one of those little craft pieces. Just filling in a little blank. And as I said, I didn't I wanted to go with the sparkly but not using gold. Um it's not that I don't love gold. Um I've got a layout coming up where I do use quite a lot of gold on it, but I decided to kind of go a bit, you know, more silver because I want to use um some different um thickers on this layout. So I'm just going through my flare and button tin here and just different bits and pieces to pull out um, because I want to use some of these flare up because I really want to buy some new flare and um, I've seen some really cool flare out there I want to get but I can't justify getting it when I do have a tin full of bits and pieces. So I'm going to be more proactive um, in using these up. To the side there I've just pulled out, um, um, one of them is like an embellishment, like one of these little epoxy embellishments, epoxy embellishments even oh, try saying that one of them is a little metal cog which I was going to stick in and I do end up pulling that off um, at the end because it just looked a bit weird um, but I tried I stuck it down and kind of went with it um, and tried to ignore it but wasn't able to I then pulled out these brads and I have a few brads in my collection but not lots and I actually really like this little gemmed um, brads but I said it's something I wanted to kind of just use up. Um, as I said, it's not that I don't like them, I just they've been in my stash for a long while. They came like on a mixed kind of, you know, set of things. And they've kind of just been hanging around in my flare tin, so I decided, hey, I wanted to add some silver and sparkle, so this would be a good time to do it. I'm just using my stamping up adhesive um, 3D foam just to put those like what I'm flare on. And then I've got these little silver um, foam glittery stars. And these have been in my stash for about four years. Um, I had them out on my desk for doing some Christmas stuff. And they kind of were just sitting on a basket, which is sort of tucked away on my desk there. And I saw them and I thought, this would be really perfect to use it on because it kind of goes with the magic -y theme and the silver theme I wanted to go with. So I decided to just tuck a few of them behind the layers, not kind of overtly wanting them. Standing out loud and proud. And as I said, I just think, again, it adds that little bit of sparkle. Um, behind some of the layers. I had this little heart again, this was sitting on my desk that I cut out using one of my um, dies and again it was just sitting there and I had a weird kind of trap space so decided to just add that in. And just popping up um, a bit of my layers with some 3D foam again because where things were going over several different layers just needed a little bit of support. And then just adding some more of that grey mist um, over the top 
just kind of help it tie into the background a tiny little bit more. And so now I'm going to mount it up on this um, red paper. Again, this is from the Pink Paisley Hey Girl collection. And again, I think it's just going to help tie everything in. As you can see, it's the same as that photo. And it's just going to sort of pull the red together and said the red of the train in the photo as well. So I'm kind of really happy with um, where that is. I'm kind of thinking, okay, now what? What to do? Do I add more? Do I add less? You know, and you kind of get to this point in the layout and you're just like, I'm not sure quite where I want to go with this. Am I finished? <laughs> Am I not finished? I'm going to add another little star to that bottom cluster because I realised I didn't have any silver in that. So the next thing, I did just cut out a little bit there because um, I went off and was hunting through my thickers um, to try and find ones that had enough sort of letters to make my title. I knew I wanted to use those silver glittery ones. Um, but then I didn't kind of have any others that had all of the letters I want. So these are actually from two different thicker sets and I'm actually going to end up using my Spectrum Noir markers just to colour them in. Um, I've been doing that on quite a few layouts recently because again I don't want to be buying more thickers but the thickers that I have got I'm kind of getting a little bit limited to what I can do with them. I do have two packs of those silver ones but um, of course you know, I'm not going to be using them on lots of projects because of course they are kind of quite sparkly which is not going to go with everything. So I'm just going to put um, the um, glittery part of the title down which is Hogwarts and it works really well because it does just pick up the silver in the brads and those sparkly stars. Um, I am going to end up moving one of those stars I believe because it's going to kind of get covered. I may not. Um, and I'm kind of just going to fuss around a little bit there with that title, getting the placement right. And as I said, I kind of, you know, I've got lots of different thickers that um, kind of are half packs. Um, so I decided to pull out the numbers um, from the one that used Let's because I thought I need to use that kind of in another place allowed. And it was just going to bring down the date to that bottom cluster there as well because I want to kind of just connect it and pull everything together and because these are pale thickers it does give me that option to do the colouring in so here you can see that I've already done one coat on it and I must say it's a little bit hiss, hit and miss how it takes um, I know that you can sand them slightly um, just with like a nail file just to get a better key for it to stick to but to be honest really couldn't be bothered um so that is it for this layout i hope you've enjoyed it and i will see you all again soon bye